On day 12, we will be spending the day in Glacier Bay National Park. This will be the route that we will follow as we go into the park, look at four major glaciers, and leave the park. As we near the park, park rangers arrive in order to tell us about the park. They'll be talking on the ship all day long. And as we enter Glacier Bay National Park, it's foggy. This park consists of 3.3 million acres and runs all the way to the Canadian border. It used to be a meadow where people lived, but then the small ice age came about 250 years ago and the glaciers started moving in. Some of the eyewitnesses of the time said it was moving as fast as a running dog. That's hard to believe. But the natives rushed out of this area and crossed icy straits to stay there. And then because of earthquakes and warmer temperatures, it receded 80 miles in 100 years. Today the bay is 1,200 feet deep. And here we can see some mountain goats on Gloomy Knob. Unfortunately my zoom is having a hard time focusing. And it will on the bear also. And then the weather starts to clear somewhat and as we pass one of the inflowing streams we see bears all along the shore. And here in the blur, two bears. I see this other one up here. It's right on the grass. Finally, by zooming out, the blur goes away, but the bears are smaller. All along our trip, there will be great beauty.
Here at the end of one of the arms of the bay is John Muir Glacier. Here we also start to see some of the ice that has fallen off of the glaciers in the water. The mountains around the park are the Fairweather Mountains, and we're still in part of the Tongass National Forest. Down there at the end is the Grand Pacific Glacier. That ice is actually in Canada. It also starts to clear off some and makes a beautiful day for filming the beauty of this area. Glaciers come in from every direction. This whole valley used to be filled with one. A hanging glacier is one that doesn't reach the water and is hanging up in the mountains. Here's an example of one. As the ice starts accumulating on the water, we start to notice wildlife on it, like harbor seals on this piece and this piece. And black-legged kittiwakes swimming around in it, waiting for a chunk to fall off of the glacier and stir up the bottom for them to feed. And now we'll take a better look at the Grand Pacific Glacier. Currently, it's receding. It's about 35 miles long, it's 2 miles wide here at its face, and 60 feet high. Its face is covered by dirt. Next up is the Marjorie Glacier. It's 250 feet tall, towering over our ship, a mile wide, 21 miles long, and flows at a rate of about 8 feet a day. So 8 feet falls off of this every single day. This is a stable glacier. It flows about eight feet a day, but it also drops eight feet off of its front. That's called calving when large chunks fall off. Let's watch some. We're over a mile from the glacier, so these huge chunks of ice that are over a hundred feet long don't look very big. You'll notice the black on each end and the black streaks. This is dirt that has been laid down in the glacier in between snow layers. And the blue color is called glacial blue, 
It's made by compressing the ice so much that it pushes all the air out, making it blue. You can see here, even though we're a mile away, it still towers over the 18-story ship that we're in. Here's another one of those hanging glaciers. Chunks sometimes fall off of it and down the cliff. The red streaks in this rock is from iron that is in it that has rusted due to the rain here. Another glacier used to be in this valley, but now it's receded up into the mountains. Some of the icebergs show how dirty the ice has become. And now we see a sea otter in the water. We'll see many on this trip. And now we come to the Lampue Glacier. It's a small one, about 180 feet tall, three quarters of a mile wide, and 16 miles long. It flows at about three feet a day. It's a stable glacier, but it doesn't melt very easily because it's sitting on a beach rather than in the water, and so it doesn't calve very often. And when it does, it just falls on the ground rather than in the water. As the sun comes out, the Fairweather Mountains are truly beautiful with their snow and rocks. And now as we come around the end of the arm, we look down the last arm of the Glacier Bay and see the John Hopkins Glacier. We're not going to be able to go down there. It's a protected harbor seal breeding area. It's 250 feet high at the front, one mile wide, 12 miles long, and it flows about 15 feet a day, so it calves pretty regularly to stay stable. And now it's time to head back out of Glacier Bay and its beautiful 
countryside. Along the way, we see some stellar sea lions. In fact, we see hundreds of them. As we leave Glacier Bay, the water gets shallower and we pass a area of seaweeds. The boat comes to pick up the rangers and we see some sea otters also. We're sailing in ice water, but the kids are swimming in the heated pools. On deck, they're having a salmon bait. And as we look out, the blue highway is still going along, this time pulling a fuel barge for some town. And as we head out of Glacier Bay, we come into icy straits with its cross currents and wind blowing. We'll be sailing through this all night as we head to Hubbard Glacier, which we'll be seeing early tomorrow morning. The view will be truly spectacular until the sun goes down. I am so glad that you had some nice weather while you were here in Glacier Bay National Park. It is one of the most beautiful places in the world. I am also glad you spent some time with me. I really have a problem since pieces keep falling off me, but then that is the way I remake myself all the time. Hope you have a nice trip to my cousin in the north. He is very interesting also. Thus, our day 12 comes to an end.